I'm, I'm really pleased to, to welcome Jeanette Van Sander. She is the foremost authority on French cinema in, in the country. So we're very lucky to have her. Welcome, Jeanette. Thank you very much for coming. Um, um, thank you very much. Um, I'm very pleased to be here to and see this film again. I did review it in Sight and Sound um, when it came out about three year, two years ago. Um, and as we discussed um, earlier on, um, this is not going to be a talk, I'm not going to give you a lecture, and nor am I going to tell you what you should think about the film. I have my opinions, and I, um, in fact, seeing it again, I've seen it several times, I always slightly change my opinion when I, when I, when I see it. So it's a very powerful film, and um, I think you, we can agree on that, maybe. Um, can I ask, first of all, how many people uh, saw it for the first time tonight? Okay, so, so most of you, yeah? Um, and it will be interesting then to, to have your, your reactions. What I'm going to do um, is, because it's a film that evidently kind of brings two stories together. One is the story of a, a group of migrants from Sri Lanka, a made-up family, uh, as, as we see, and their uh, kind of trajectory um, as migrants, as refugees um, in France, and their desire to go to England. And eventually, at the end, uh, we see them in England, and we, we see kind of various stages of their integration, uh, attempts, difficulties, and so on. Um, so in that sense, it's a story about specific migrants from a particular country, and we know why they, they, they had to flee and why they, they're in France. Uh, at the same time, I think it's quite clear that the film um, offers itself as a kind of more universal story about what it's like to be going through this kind of issue. Now, the second story uh, that the film to is about, and that's partly why I'm, sh I'm sure I'm, I'm invited here and, and uh, I have done a lot of work on, is uh, the story of the particular setting in which most of the film takes place, the the French suburbs or the banlieue. And um, I'm, I've just got a couple of slides simply because as I'm going to mention a few names, um, it's quite always useful to have to see them. So could I have the first slide, please? Um, and um, yeah, that's the one. Um, and um, uh, the banlieue in French means suburb. But when you say in English the suburbs or suburban, you have a particular image, more like what you see at the end of the film, yes, um, where you see those nice houses with gardens. When you talk about la banlieue in France, of course, in theory, it means any kind of suburb, um, leafy, be uh, beautiful, ugly, uh, dystopian, etc. But when we talk about la banlieue as a problem, as an issue, uh, which has become a kind of very big issue in French society, it tends to be a narrow sense of the banlieue, uh, of the suburb, which is what you see in the film. You think you're almost you're in an episode of The Wire, yes? I mean, if you, perhaps yeah. that's a bit old already for, for some of the, uh, the younger people here. Um, and it always refers to uh, a particular kind of uh, building, architecture, high-rise building, uh, completely run down, uh, on the far edge of the city usually. Um, and you, you, you see that in the film, don't you, where you, you see that it's stuck at the end of a, on the, on, at the edge of the field, it's a long way from anywhere. Um, so there's that sense of isolation, uh, 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 social problems, uh, also a, um, a, a world which is um, ethnically mixed, um, and we introduced to a few people who are clearly from uh, the former French colonies, um, and now we have the, a new lot of migrants coming from uh, Sri Lanka. And this is um, a, um, a banlieue that is um, um, always presented in film, and this film is no exception, as I said, dystopian. Often what, what you see on screen are young men, yes? There's something strangely doesn't seem to be any wi older women or or women or children, you, you, you see them very, very briefly, but yes, it's kind of overrun by young men, uh, violent young men um, uh, involved in this kind of traffic, as you see. And, and this is a major social issue in France. Um, and I think what, all, all I want to point out is the fact that 
it is a social issue and it's a very serious one. Uh, the fact that the, these housing estates created mostly from the 1960s onward have been used as kind of dumping ground for uh, uh, people at the lower scale of, of the economic ladder. And, um, but um, also that is always presented in that way. And one interesting thing is that the way it's presented in the media tends to be what we've seen. And, in, and when I reviewed the film, I kind of looked into the background of where it was shot. And, and interestingly, I came across material that from people who live there, real people who live in that real place where the film was shot and where they were adamant that this was a very exaggerated representation of, of the place. So, so I'm saying that just to say the film makes a choice of a background and it, it, and it asks us to see it as very significant socially, but you have to be aware that it's one particular specific kind of background, yes? And, and, and so we can come to that in a discussion, but it, it's, it's important to know. These places exist, but they're a fraction of the suburb and, and this is the one that is always shown in the media, on television, in the newspapers and so on. And, and so, um, okay, so I, I just wanted to make that point that this is, and I, I put that um, now quite old um, cover of uh, Time magazine which talks about the other France because um, when we see films um, about France, we, we, we tend to be associating it more with um, Central Paris, the Eiffel Tower, beautiful surrounding, sort of Woody Allen, midnight in Paris, kind of, yes? And so it's like completely polarized, a completely different vision of what France means, yeah? Okay, um, could I have the next slide, please? Um, yeah, and um, also I wanted to just briefly say that Deepan, in that respect, is, is a film that uh, is part, if you like, of a genre, is part of a particular sec section of French cinema, um, which started in the 1980s, roughly speaking, uh, when, uh, when the cinema became interested in uh, the, the ethnic composition of, of, of the French suburbs and um, um, the, the growing social problems. And one film that often epitomizes this particular issue and this particular location is a film some of you may know called La Haine, uh, the one on the left, uh, Hatred, literally, um, which was a, a hugely successful and um, film made in 1995, so it's now more than 20 years old. Um, and I thought it was interesting that Deepan is made 20 years later. And we can see still the influence of La Haine on films that are set in this particular area. Um, of France. Um, and I, I just put um, between La Haine and Dipan, there would be dozens of films that I could talk to you about, but obviously I'm not going to do that. I just picked two because they represent, um, is to, to show that it is a genre and as such it includes quite a variety now of, of types of films. So you, you get the, the, the serious social drama with violence as such from La Haine and then which you, you see in Deepan. But you also have now, it's become so entrenched in um, the, the French cultural imagination, if you like, that you get comedies. So for example, uh, the second uh, poster, Les Caira, um, and, um, is, is a, a comedy uh, set in this, this sort, sort of milieu in that environment, but which makes fun of it. So it's kind of reached the point where you can even make fun of it in the in film. And, to balance the fact that on the whole, and Deepan to some extent is no exception, these films tend to be concentrating on young men and violent young men. Um, there is a new trend um, of um, a few films more recently which tend to feminize um, the, the banlieue in terms of presenting us with the same situation and often the same social problems, but concentrating on women, on young women. And one is called uh, Bande de Filles, which was translated into English as Girlhood, um, and came out here a couple of years ago. Uh, very, very interesting. Um, this year, a new, uh, there's one called Divine, Divine um, which we similarly uh, look at. So Bande de Filles, for example, um, the first two thirds of the film is about a gang fighting, but among gangs of girls, of young girls, um, um, black young women, as you see on the poster. Okay, so just to, to say that this film Deepan, in one respect, comes out of this genre of the French film about the banlieue. 
And so when it, when it, it's one way of seeing it, of what it says about that environment. Okay. At the same time, it tells us a different story by bringing in um, those people, um, the, 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 fa the family, the recomposed family from Sri Lanka. So um, before opening up to some questions, I wanted to also say something about the filmmaker, Jacques Odia, and how we can understand this film, not just as a French film about the banlieue, which it is, but also as, as a film by Jacques Odia. And so could I have the, the next slide, please? Um, okay, so um, Jacques Audiard um, is, is now, I think, one of the, um, a, a very prominent French filmmaker. Uh, he, for those of you who might be familiar with older French cinema, his father was a very famous scriptwriter called Michel Audiard. Possibly it doesn't mean anything to you. He was a great scriptwriter of popular French film throughout the 50s and 60s and so on. Uh, so somebody who grew up in the, in the film uh, milieu. And... Um, he has made relatively few films, so he was born in 1952, and he has made relatively few films. Uh, this, this is not all of them, but there are not all that many more. But um, many of them have been extremely successful, both critically and, and at the box office. So, um, and I just wanted to, I've picked the ones which I think are, um, well, actually the most interesting, the, his best films. And um, so, Un héros très discret, the first one, um, was, in English was translated as a self-made hero, and it's about the French resistance during the Second World War. Sur mes lèvres, Read My Lips, um, was the, the a drama about a young thug played by Vincent Cassel, you see on the poster, uh, who, um, uh, who came, became famous because of La Haine. Uh, the third one, The Beat My Heart Skipped, um, uh, is, is about... Um, a young man in his uh, relationship with a young Chinese woman. Uh, un Prophet, some of you may, ha may have seen some, one, of the, one of the most recent. Um, a Prophet is a prison drama. And then finally, Rust and Bone, um, um, a, a drama where a young woman loses her legs. It's about the relationship between that couple. But what's interesting in, in, in looking at his work in general, and which I think helps understand some of the issues we see in Deepan, is to think about, you know, are there any, in this kind of diverse type, uh, kinds of films, you know, prison drama, melodrama, about a couple, um, Read My Lips is like a thriller as well, um, is that I think there are two things that connect these films, who, even though they're very diverse, which you recognize from what we've just seen. And, and one aspect is, um, the way in which uh, these films often skirt the line between documentary and fiction, between kind of social issues, uh, taking us through um, the, a particular social problem. So a prophet is, is about is a prison drama, but uh, the hero is is a somebody from a, a North African background, uh, in, and it's about. Uh, partly about ethnic rivalry between communities and so on. Um, so, the, so all the films have that kind of, are embedded in, in, in kind of a fine detail of French social issues. Um, they, they, you, know, you can watch them and, and, and there's a kind of seriousness and depth of, of material about them. At the same time, what, what, what seems to connect um, them, perhaps Rust and Bone less so, is... is um, a focus on masculinity and violence. And there they tends to be a, a kind of a, a trajectory in which uh, a, a, a young male character uh, or a male character uh, grows up and, and kind of um, uh, becomes, as it were, more of a man uh, and often through violence. Yes, so violence is Kind of this, so this is a filmmaker, what I'm saying is, who's interested in exploring the relationship between masculinity and violence. And, and of course, in the film we've just seen, um, this is very much an issue, isn't it, about um, masculinity and violence. And, and, and while it's embedded in a very specific social issue or set of issues, it's also, I think, um, interested in that violence uh, in, and, and its relationship to masculinity in a more general sense. Also, 
also, I would add, and, and this, uh, I think the film we've seen also makes it clear, or perhaps less overtly, is that uh, this reflection on masculinity and violence is also uh, filtered through the cinema and filtered through um, um, a particular vision of male violence that comes, comes to us also from the media, but also from, from film. So that, um, that extraordinarily violent scene towards the end of the film, one can understand in, in that way. Uh, and you may, I'm sure some of you would have picked up earlier on at one point, the couple are looking at the violence, uh, you know, the, those kind of, and they say, oh, it's like being in, in, at the cinema, it's like watching a film. So, so, so this is um, a, a filmmaker who, um, is you know like many um, filmmakers and like many, I would say like many French filmmakers, in love with Hollywood cinema, and 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 in love with a kind of violent male Hollywood cinema, and and who, uh, but who is reflecting on it? So it's so a reflection on on violence, but filtered through um, the media, um, and 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 I said this kind of do edge between documentary um, and fiction, and. Okay, and I, I would say um, uh, a few points that I would like to open up as questions. I think, yes, it would be um, good to, um, I mean, I could go on and talk more about the, the, the background and, and, and so on, and, or give you my own view of the film, but I, I think it would be more interesting if that comes, out, comes up in the, in the discussion. Um, that, uh, just a couple of points that seem to me um, interesting is uh, to, to observe in the film, is the way in which um, the is the question of point of view, which is always um, very important in film. Um, about uh, and it seems to me that's a film that succeeds in uh, making us see take the migrants' point of view to kind of enter the story with them and and kind of understand their surrounding uh, through their point of view. So at the same time as we observe them. Um, it seems to me the film succeeds in, in, in doing that. Um, and, and I think it would be interesting to, to think about that. Now, some of the questions that personally I ask myself about the film, and, and I'd be interested to hear what you think, um, as well as I'm sure there'll be other questions coming up, is, is um, on the one hand, is, is how could we can understand that double ending, yes? The, the sort of the violence pre uh, in in um, at the staircase, and when he deep and goes to rescue um, Yalini, and at the same time, and 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 then the other ending. So because we we think the film could have stopped, could have ended there, couldn't it? Could have ended with him rescuing her. That's that this is so. Uh, but there is a second, a kind of coda, and and one which when the film came out um, in France. Uh, was very much debated and actually criticised, um, and uh, and and the the this is a film that was very successful, uh, as well as receiving the the Palme d'Or, uh, the, the top prize at the Cannes Festival. So it, it, it was very much recognised as um, for for its qualities. At the same time, that award and the film itself became extremely controversial in the French context, and part of the controversy was was the portrayal the film gives us of a particular French setting and then that ending. So I think um, that that's, you know, what you think about the way it ends, I think is inter it would be interesting to discuss. Um, and, and I also, personally, I'm always interested in uh, a gender approach to cinema and, and uh, this is a story of a man, but it's also the story of a couple and family as well. Um, and I wondered, um, whether um, you had some views about the way the film portrays uh, the couple and, and whether we um, side more with one or the other or, or, or what observations you might have. So I think um, as well, even though I say this is a film concentrated on masculinity and like a lot of Jacques Audiard film, um, here we also have a couple and I think it's, um, it's worth kind of thinking also about the way uh, that the gender intervenes in the, in, the, in the telling of the story. So maybe I think I, I could stop now and... Uh